this episode of You Can't Eat the Grass. The farm is looking beautiful, but there's no time to stop and smell the tulips because spring is the busiest time of year. Watch as we harvest an abundance of flowers for the big farm opening and plow through farm tasks trying to stay on schedule. Day or night, the work must get done. Also, Serena puts together a beautiful spring flower arrangement and we finally use the stand and plant tool. So sit back and enjoy the view. It's spring flower abundance here at Red Roof Family Farm. Today is finally the day that we're gonna use the stand and plant. It's been cold out, and so we haven't been able to plant out our seedlings. The weather's passed, all that cold weather, perfect time, it's overcast, it's cloudy. This is the best type of weather for putting transplants in. So we're, we're finally busting this out, and we're gonna use it for the very first time. Since we haven't used this before, I don't actually know how to use this. I'm confident. I think that this is gonna work great. And and I know Ian's concerns, because Ian's concerns are that we're gonna use this, it's not gonna be planted perfectly, we're gonna have to go back and we're gonna have to replant things. Um, but for me, no matter what, this is gonna save me time because Ian can't plant things. So even if we use this, we plant them, we bust through a ton of stuff, and I have to go back and do you know a little bit of finishing work, no matter what, this is gonna have me ahead of the game. Ian is going to be on trigger duty, stand plant duty, and then my job is going to be to pop, oh, <laughs> heavy, pop the plugs in. So I'm going to be walking along, sticking the plugs in from the trays while Ian controls the stand and plant. So we got to grab some of these plants. What are we planting today? Today we're doing a bed of Rebecca. A bed of feverfew, a bed of lettuce. Let's go! What's the technique? Uh, well, wherever you point it, it actually slides backwards. So, you know, first you have to realize that whatever you're aiming for, you're aiming for the far side, and then it comes back, unless it does that, I guess. I don't know. This is, I'm new, right? And then you have to keep it open when you pull it out. Right? Otherwise, you're gonna chomp it, chomp it to bits. Ready for some testers? I'm ready for some testers. Got some random snapdragons. Perfect for testing. It's like, it's out of the till zone. And that is two. Like, how did you put two in? Because I, I can't manipulate them with my hand. <laughs> Your hands are broken? Well, I got these big gloves on. So it doesn't close up the hole very well. It seems like it's deep enough for these. Right? But is it too deep? Potentially. Eh. What are you thinking? It's definitely a little bit complicated to get the technique with the landscape fabric. So I think that there is going to be, no matter what, a tuck in after we put them all in. You know, so we can get them in place, we can get them in the holes, but we're gonna have to come back afterwards and just uh, push in the dirt and pull the landscape fabric down. I mean, if we have to go through and we have to like literally replant it and replace fabric, there's no point using it. But I think y you can't cram it in and like just mess up the landscape fabric, right? Like the, the stand and plant user 
needs to, to figure out how to use it with the fabric. You should know better than to expect too much from me, Serena. All right, we got our first tray in, and my initial impression is uh, there's a little bit getting used to um, how much pressure you have to push down on. Some of the plugs are really short, and on those ones, I'm not even pushing uh, the, the tool in. I'm just letting the weight of the stand and plant push into the soil, and, and that's it. That's how deep I'm going, because I, if I push down, I go too deep, and then when I pull up, uh, the dirt collapses in and it's, you know, covering the leaves. Our soil is really light and fluffy and so that might not be what the case is for everybody, but for the majority of these, once I got in a rhythm, I was just using the weight of the stand and plant. And, and if it was a big plug, maybe I was putting a little bit of pressure on it, but, you know, I was surprised because I was expecting, you know, like a huh, and then open up motion, you know, like, but it's actually a really delicate controlled motion. That's the face of somebody who wants to get back to work. It ended up uh, raining pretty good out there, so we couldn't film too much of the action, but uh, we're finished what we're gonna do for the standard plant for now. We did two beds and we did find a rhythm where we were moving, you know, kind of as fast as we were hoping for. I think that some of the key takeaways are that what your plugs are matter because, um, you know, kind of like a, a bigger plug that has like more weight on the bottom uh, they'd slide down easy and then they'd stay in the holes, whereas something that was really light, um, it was hard to get it to like sit in place. It's pretty good for a uh, first time. I'm excited. It'll definitely speed up the process of planting. Filming me? <laughs> you got me. You got me literally yeah. at the very end of my task. Yeah. I'm just doing some cleanup around the yard today. Uh, I got a million different spots where I still have to fill in dirt from the irrigation project. So I'm gonna work on that, and uh, maybe I'm gonna pull a little bit of grass out of the farm too. Nothing too exciting, but I'm I'm excited to do it because uh, it's beautification of the farm hey. projects which are my favorite. There's a lot of flowers that are opening up on the farm. It feels like we have way more color on the farm at this time of year than we normally do. This work that we put in to the farm in past years that is, you know, gonna pay off for us in the near future. And, uh, and that's good because, you know, we still have so much work to do and, and it can be hard to stay motivated for all that. So seeing, seeing your past self do nice things for your current self makes your current self want to do nice things for your future self. I have to do a job that I have been putting off for a long time. I have to get all the perennials into the ground. Ian has done a ton of work. We've totally revamped what we always called the flower farm. It's a spot that has, you know, kind of degraded over uh, three years of intensively growing flowers in it. So lots more compost. It's gonna be beautiful We're gonna get these perennials in there. It's gonna be very low weed pressure um, It's it's a big job, but I, I think I'll be able to get it done by the end of the weekend And then we will be reaping the rewards in years to come It's definitely pretty easy to plant when the soil looks like this Nice and fluffy. Yes, it's very fluffy Last year, we had so many problems with these Van Eyck's. They bloomed and they were only this tall. They were completely unusable. And they look a lot better this year, but they're still not great. They've really extended in the last two days, but they've also opened like crazy. They look incredible and we love seeing them. So 
We're not gonna be too upset. These weren't necessarily here to sell, um, but man, you know, a day and just like all this color. And the fact that these like went from no color to completely open in a day means the tulips, it's not gonna be long. Things are, things are really coming along, but it's very fun. It's very fun to have them. First market coming soon. Yeah, I know I was taking a look and I'm like, mm, there's lots of these that I'm gonna have to start picking in, in a couple days. Friday, tulip sales officially begin Friday. When I shared the video about unboxing all of our perennials, you know, there was probably a couple hundred perennials and everyone was really nervous about how much work it was gonna be to plant it. And it makes it very easy when what you're planting it into is just like clean slate, thousand square foot garden. I'm at the point now that, you know, I have pretty much all of them planted. What I'm planting now is perennials that I grew myself. These are stuff, you know, that I started kind of back end of February, get them into the ground and they should probably still bloom this year. It's exciting to imagine what this will be in the future. The tulips are really opening up. I know, next week. Next week, it's gonna be all about the tulips, which is why it's so important to get all this seedling planting finished so that we're ready to have like a tulip intensive week. You know, I have this and I have some seed starting. And then after that, you know, I can really turn my attention to getting ready to sell. Those two beds by the fence you planted too, it doesn't look like there's anything there, but what'd you put in there? Oh, that's the phlox. That is the phlox. So the phlox ended up filling an entire bed and then there's a chunk in here that's phlox too. And then the next kind of chunk is a bunch of solidago or goldenrod. And so I'm really excited about the plan. Vision this with me. So the way that I planted everything is the tallest stuff is closest to the fence. And then height wise, it keeps going down as we like work towards our path. So I'm like, ooh, like I can stand on the path in the summer and look and it'll just be like a wall of flowers where I can see a bunch of different stuff, you know, because everything's going to kind of be at these different heights. So I'm, I'm really excited. You know, it might, it might not work out this year, right? Because things aren't going to be their true height with it being their first year of growing. But by next year, it should, should be very pretty. <laughs> this is probably the bed that I'm the most excited about because I bought 100 Baptisia um, or false indigo. And so this is pretty much an entire bed. It's going to be a while until it produces anything. But once it does, once it gets established, super drought tolerant and really productive. So this is just gonna be like, like an entire hedge. This has been my motivation to keep me going <laughs> as I've been spending my entire day planting the perennials out. Oh my God, these are so gorgeous. These are uh, Disneyland Paris and they, they're like a multi flowering, like double. They have like, some of them have extra flowers coming and the color is just beautiful. And I love how it has like the green on the outside. And then the, the daffodil is a uh, cum laude. I don't know, Latin to someone. <laughs> I, I know that's probably not how you say it. The, the coloring, the, the peachy tones on it just looks so nice with the orange. And it was, it was a total fluke. It was just those were the last things left and they got mixed together and planted here, but it's very pretty. I didn't film any of this because I did this in the dark last night at 10 o'clock, um, but I moved all of my you know warmer weather stuff into our greenhouse. This is the one month a year that we use this greenhouse. Um, and you know, th this is exciting. This means we finally, in our weather forecast, don't have, you know, minus five <laughs> uh, coming up. And so these, these are all my tomatoes that are gonna be going into our tomato greenhouse. And over here is something that I was really excited about this when, you know, I decided to do this as an experiment. This is Cardoon. And my plan with this was, 
even though it was going to take me the entire year to grow it to get a flower i was like these things are so cool artichoke flowers are so cool i'm going to grow it i'm going to get these artichoke flowers they'll be fun to use in the fall um, but since I've been growing them, I've seen people talking about them this spring and saying that they actually use the leaves as a, as a filler and they look amazing. They're like a dusty gray spiny, um, and, and they get massive, right? These are just babies and they're already like this. So the leaves, you know, they're going to be this big, huge thing. So I was growing this as like a self-indulgent money, money loser, just to be beautiful and fun. But this might end up being a really productive and a really valuable crop for me. So very exciting. They'll be into the ground in two weeks because they like the heat. It's a bit late, but I got all the seedlings watered and put to bed. Everything's all closed up. You know, it seems like, you know, it's a bit of work for us to do every day, but it is nothing. It is absolutely nothing in comparison to the massive amount of work that we had last year uh, in the seedling sale this time of year. You know, I was, I was just kind of sitting here watering and reminiscing about um, how insane Aprils have been, you know, every other year that we've lived on this farm. This is our, our fourth year here, and the other three we all did. Uh, we did these nursery sales, and we had, you know, thousands and thousands of plants. One year, Serena had 1,800 tomato plants in all in paper pots that that she started. It was an insane amount of work trying to keep all that stuff uh, alive and healthy. Now this year, with us eliminating the whole nursery sale. We're just trying to focus more on getting to market earlier. <laughs> you know, like it's hard to think of too many things that I really love doing more than, you know, selling down at the farmer's market. It's such a fun uh, experience and I'm really excited to get back to that. But it is pretty late now. So I need to get inside and, you know, start chilling out because uh, tomorrow comes early. Can we take a moment to appreciate the pattern on your on the panel? On your overall? My my veggie ones? Yeah. <laughs> So cool. Yeah, nice. It doesn't take much for it to get hot in the greenhouse. So I have to make sure that I'm watering stuff at least every day. No shortage of work to do on the farm this time of year. Oh, busy, busy, busy. Even though we are super busy and we don't have any time, we're gonna take a little bit here and we're gonna do something we're gonna categorize under marketing. We're gonna go out and we're gonna cut some of the stuff that we do not sell to make an arrangement for me and Ian to enjoy and uh, we'll take a picture to justify the work. So let's go pick some fun stuff. We have daffodils, but we don't sell these. These are just for us to enjoy. 
They're kind of short, so they're not really great for arrangements, but they're really pretty varieties. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick some of these and then build something around that. Daffodils are a little tricky to work with because the sap that they let out actually is kind of a poison to other flowers. So if you want to work with daffodils and other flowers, you have to let them rest in water for a little bit before you add them into the bouquet and you can't trim them. You can't like freshly trim them. So we're gonna pick these first, get them into water and then go to other things. Looks good so far. See what I have? Oh, I have pets. Is that what I have? Where are you? Looks pretty good. Now we have to go pick some weeds. The thing that really makes, you know, arrangement go from just a handful of flowers I grabbed out in the garden into an arrangement is all the extra little bits, all the greenery. I don't really have any of that but we're gonna make a really short arrangement. So I am in my greenhouse where there is a ton of weeds blooming everywhere. And I'm gonna pick a bunch of these things and I'm gonna use this as kind of like the greenery and the filler for the basis of what we're gonna build. So this is just some sort of weed grass that's flowering. I think it looks great. I think it's gonna add a bunch of texture. This is kind of fun. I've never used this before. I don't know what this is, so. We'll bring this, we'll see what kind of vase life this has. Cause it, it looks kind of cool. I like those little white flowers it's got. I've never used this as well. Um, this is very short and I don't know if I normally would use this, but this looks kind of similar to the idea of the cardoon leaves that I'm gonna be growing. So I'm gonna try some of this just so I can experiment with the idea. If it only lasts a day, there's gonna be no customer complaints. Finally, the last thing I'm gonna use is these like spindly alfalfa stems. I've used this before. These have like a pretty good phase life as long as I can, I can get them without breaking them. Um, but I really like the look of these. They're really delicate. It's coming together. Pretty good. How indulgent, sacrificing cherries. Mm -hmm. well, we'll see what we can put together. Because the stems are really short, I don't have any vase that's really gonna work with them. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna build it into this bowl. But if I just put them into this bowl, they're gonna fall everywhere. So I need some sort of support. I need, you know, a frog, which I don't own, but while doing this, I'm like, I should probably buy one for myself. But a trick people use to um, not use floral foam is they get some chicken wire and they ball it up and they put a ball of it in the bottom of the bowl, build off of that. I don't wanna pinch it down too far because I still want like openings. I just have a hard time seeing all of this, that being enough support for all this stuff, but. Can you see it? I guess. <laughs> okay, let's get some water. Okay, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use all my weeds and I'm gonna, actually the first thing I'm gonna do is put my gloves back on. But I'm gonna, you know, create kind of like a greenery base. I'm gonna build something that then at the end, I'm gonna finish with my pretty flowers. Yeah, they're, you know, I want them to hang out, but maybe not too much. These are some of the biggest pieces. You know, I need to make sure it's all kind of balanced. Okay, that's enough of that. Okay, and then this stuff's a little bit stronger. So I'm gonna put some of this in to be a bit more vertical. Start using this frog. Okay, like that's, you know, it's coming together. You know, now we'll, we'll start putting in some of these 
alfalfa stems. This, I don't know how to do this. This is me just like playing. You know, I figure every time I do this, I get a better idea how to do this. I don't know, how's that looking from that side? It's looking pretty balanced. Okay, I feel like my greenery has done uh, what the florists say. It's uh, disguised my mechanics. You know, the, the ball of chicken wire would be my mechanics. Um, you know, and now, you know, I got some shape to be able to start working with stuff. You know what? Let's put the, let's put the cherries in. I don't want these above the flowers. I want them to be down below the flowers. So I'm gonna cut these a little bit shorter. Every single one of these is like, hey, did you want a handful of cherries? Or did you want this in your, in your flowers? I, I don't know. What do you think? I like it. Except I don't like... That one? Yeah. Okay, let's leave it. We can snip it, but let's leave it. Maybe we will like that. Maybe we'll kind of build it so that it goes like that. And then, and then you know what it's going to do? Fall over. Yeah. <laughs> no. Swoosh, swoosh right off the... No. Ian? If it does that, we can get some tape and we can tape the... Right? Like, look. Look, I already have some... Look. Th there's already some wind heading that way. <laughs> and some wind over this way. Okay, so we're done with yellow. Now I got some of these little white pieces. These are the things that don't look expensive, but without it, make your arrangement look cheap. <laughs> okay, so the next thing we're gonna put in is the tulips, because the tulips are short. The narcissus or the daffodils, they're taller. So we'll, we'll do these first. Okay, I got this one one white one that's kind of like a one-off. So stick that in the top. These are my favorites. These are my precious. These are Disneyland Paris. These are so good that I didn't put them in the flower farm. They're only for me. Now we got some of these. These are my Oxford elites. Okay, it's getting kind of empty over here, huh? Now we got some red. It's gonna be a lot of color when they all start opening up. Yeah. You know, and then we still have this, right? Mm. Okay. So the trick with this is we've let them rest. As I was saying, these, they have the sap, so we can't cut them. <laughs> so I maybe, there's a few that are pretty tall. I think I should like start with these to kind of get them wherever I want tall pieces. I think it looks good. Mm -hmm. The colors all go together pretty nice. Yeah, I was intentional with the colors. I knew, like, I wanted, like, yellows, whites, reds, and oranges. I'm happy with the top, so this is, like, when I now get down. On the down low? On the down low. You know, because it's, it's tricky. Like, you look at it from the top, but, you know, if it's on your table and you're, like, sitting at your table, this is more how you'd actually look at it. One in here. Oh! <gasps> spill the water everywhere. <laughs> Down to Maybe. your last two. I know. Okay. I think this there's... feels like it needs a little bit of something in there. And then in here. Get in there. There. Ta-da. Ta-da. Okay. I like it. Looks pretty good, huh? Yeah. Okay. But we're not done. Now we put these in for finishing touches. I take my tada back. It's preemptive. You know, and these, these are the type of things where you don't really see it when you put stuff like this in at the end, but I feel like it makes it look more expensive. You know, and it doesn't take much of these to add, add a lot. I'm also texture obsessed when it comes to flowers. Okay, we're getting close to tada time. Okay. There we go. Then you can appreciate. Good work, Serena. Looks pretty good. Where's all that wind? This is the windy side. Blowing right at me.
It's Tuesday now. Serena has been harvesting tulips like crazy. Uh, she probably has like 50 bouquets worth of tulips in uh, the walk-in cooler, but we are gonna start selling them uh, probably this Thursday. We're gonna start trying to sell them roadside and see how that goes. Me, I have to do some tilling. Uh, I'm still trying to stay ahead of, uh, you know, like the farm needs and keep uh, beds open for, uh, for planting. Serena's been using up a lot of the space for planting all of her perennials, and, and that means that I have to open up a bit more space. In here, though, is all the tulips that Serena's been harvesting. Inside these boxes is all tulips as well, so there's lots, lots in here. All the work of previous years has really started to add up and, and this is the first year where it feels like there's a real abundance of flowers, you know, we're only kind of like late April and, and normally we only have, you know, a couple months of prime summertime where it really feels like abundance, but there's, there's so much color on the farm right now. Uh, we have planted a ridiculous amount of bulbs on this property since we moved here. Right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to till this little grass patch right between uh, the two sections of farm. All right, I got the tilling done, and now we got one more thing to do tonight. And that is, we gotta start some, start some seeds. Yeah. Seed starting time. Yeah. Family yep. seed starting time. Yeah. Serena hasn't started enough of her own plants. She had to go buy some. No, I went to the plant store. I went to our local. And I got these. Yeah, I bought Leah gloves so that she can work hard for me. I bought this really cool plant. I don't know if this will work out as, as a cut flower, but this variegated foliage is super cool. Um, it's an Artemisia. It's supposed to be perennial, um, and I've heard other people talk about using them, so worth the, worth the experiment. And then I got a few um, Mommy, like scented it. geranium plants. They smell amazing. They smell citrusy. Okay, I think the kids want to get some sillies out. Yeah. You have some sillies for the camera? Yes. That's your silly. Do you dance or? Where'd you go? <laughs> what about you, Sam? You got anything silly to do? <laughs> <laughs> person who's watching or persons <laughs> well hopefully more than one person oh Bobo <laughs> and you Seton listen I always want a few hundred of these scattered around the farm they always look so good I put them everywhere yeah they get massive by the end of the summer mm -hmm. Serena already has a bunch of these trays filled with dirt, so I just have to water them so they can start. Everybody's waiting for me right now. Wait. Hold no. Get this way to. Yeah, hey, I'm back live. <laughs> it's a little bit of uh, chaos in here today. Yay! Not as focused as they normally are. Yay! Play. Even though Leah's our seeding expert, our resident seeding expert, normally she puts them in so fast I can barely keep up with her. Okay, Leah, next next variety. Okay. Oh wait, they're already poked. Show, show the people how good you are. Yeah. Uh, okay. Good. Watch, watch me do the whole thing, or? Yeah, we're gonna. Well, not the whole thing. Just for. That shows that you can do some of it. Okay. Show how fast you are when I give you big seeds instead of tiny little seeds.
Well, we still have lots more seeding work to do because we have to start all of our zinnias and all of our marigolds and all of our cosmos. There's, there's a lot we got going, but this is where we're gonna leave it off today. And let me tell you, there are some exciting things coming next week because those tulips are getting turned into bouquets that we are gonna be selling. So I can't wait to share all that with you guys.